Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 17. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. You know, ultimately, let's remember, it says in Jeremiah, that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? When... uh, in the flood, in the days of Noah, in the dispensation of conscience in that time, there were, uh, it was just the conscience guiding man. And without the Holy Spirit in man, we know that the Holy Spirit resides in the believer in the church today. And that's the, um, the salt and the light that we're supposed to be. And we're supposed to be, uh, preserving the world world, which in essence then the Holy Spirit, we understand, is preserving the world. Because if we're listening to the Lord, that would be the preservation. But the rest of the world is really much like the days of Noah. They're following after their conscience. And they've got a a conscience that is uh, not right with the Lord. Uh, So they've got a a mind that is darkened, a conscience that is seared. uh, um, They're following what they think is best, but uh, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but in the end are the ways of death. You know, so it's impossible, but that offenses will come. Well, when people aren't coming to Christ, the world as a whole is going to follow after themselves and they're going to follow after Satan. You know, so then offenses are going to come. Things are going to be done that are wrong. And we're seeing that in society nowadays. Uh, We're seeing that happen, that uh, people are, uh, for all sorts of wickedness, that's against God's word. But it says, but woe unto him through whom they come. So there's a severe warning. It says then in verse 2, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea, then he should offend one of these little ones. Uh, Here, this verse, I believe it is very, very clear that there are degrees of punishment in hell. Hell, of course, is still hell. But there are those that are uh, abusers of children. There are those that are selling kids drugs. Uh, People want to legalize drugs. That's not going to help the problem. You know, um, People want to do all sorts of wicked things. They want to allow children to make uh, decisions that are lifetime uh, permanent decisions. And uh, they're kids. We need to be protecting kids. We can't be about things that are wicked towards kids. And uh, those people that are for those things, uh, those uh, parents that are uh, making decisions, that are going to hurt their kids permanently, they're going to be judged one day. Now, there's, of course, uh, forgiveness in that. But I can't think, uh, Vernon McGee, he would say that there's something worse than hell. And I I agree with him. I mean, of course, hell is uh, tremendously terrible. But, you know, he said to hear uh, that your child followed you to hell, and, and would say, I'm here because I followed you, Dad. I'm here because I followed you, Mom. And that would be worse and add to that punishment of hell more so. You know, aren't, aren't we glad that we can have forgiveness in the blood of Jesus Christ? And if you're listening to this and you say, well, you know, I've done some things in my life, you can have forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. And as long as you have breath, you can repent and turn to him and put your trust in him. And if you have children, you can be telling your children about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there's only a window of opportunity for that with many, uh, many of us with family members. So we should take that window of opportunity. But I believe scripture is very clear. Those that abuse children, they're going to have a uh, have it much worse because uh, this verse, I believe, speaks to uh, degrees of punishment that people will see in hell that are even much worse. Verse 3, take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day and seven times in a day, turn again to thee saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. 
We should have forgiving hearts. And the Lord has a forgiving heart with us. Now, a lot of people will take this passage and they'll say, well, you're passing judgment on me. I'm not passing judgment on anyone. I'm just telling what the word of the Lord says. And God is going to judge those that are in wickedness and never repented and turned to him. Uh, People want to believe that there's, you know, salvation outside of turning to Christ. And uh, they think there's salvation in uh, praying a prayer and still remaining in their same sin. And uh, I'm not saying people can't struggle in sin, but there's a recognition that our our ways are not his ways. His ways are not our ways that, you know, we see that, you know what, I can't live in this sin any longer and call myself a believer. And the, the one I like to use is, you know, I mean, if there was a serial killer and uh, I, by the way, I think you, you We've probably all too many times uh, watched too many things that involve serial killers. I think we should avoid those things on uh, television. We shouldn't have a fascination as society with those things. We should, you know, stay away from them. Uh, But uh, let's say a person was a serial killer and they're caught and they uh, put you know, put their trust in Jesus. They're, let's say they're not caught, okay? I guess it works better if they're not caught. They're not caught. They put their faith in Jesus and they start going to church. Well, first of all, if if, if somebody did and they got caught, I, I think they, the first thing they should do in that case is they should go to the authorities, turn themselves in and spend the rest of their lives in prison. And they should be willing to do that. I don't, I don't there are consequences for those things in life. But then... I would say the person doesn't, and they still just, you know, once in a while still struggle with uh, killing people on the weekends. And I know this is an extreme example. That uh, wouldn't make any sense, would it, that they would do those things. So uh, that would be a horrible thing that uh, somebody would do. You know, it's uh, it's just wickedness that they're still acting those things out. Um, so that wouldn't show repentance, it wouldn't show, you know, turning and you could say, well, but they repent and turn to God seven times. You know, there's some things that people are going to turn from uh, completely and totally when they come to Christ. There's others that we, uh, of course, may struggle with in our lives. But uh, that's one I believe, you know, it would be very clear cut. And I think that person that came to Christ would then turn themselves in. A uh, pretty extreme example, I understand. But verse five, and the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And that's a prayer I think we can all have. You know, uh, faith come, cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, we can uh, increase our faith by being in the word of God, uh, but we should be praying that the Lord would do that. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you. Uh, now, of course, that would be if that's in the Lord's will. You know, a lot of people will take these things to e- extremes, but if that was the Lord's will, uh, he's, he's going to grant that. Verse 7, by which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by, and when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meat, and will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken. Afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he not thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded of him? I trow not. Now that means I, I think not. That's not going to happen. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded, you say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. What, what's this passage talking about? A lot of people think that they can get to heaven by keeping the commandments, that they can get to heaven by uh, doing what is right and what is good and saying, I live by uh, the Sermon on the Mount. First of all, nobody's kept the commandments. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, and the wages of sin is death. Um, so uh, keeping the commandments, that's that's not it. I mean, none of us live by the Sermon on the Mount. We don't do that. So um, in this, you know, are we going to earn salvation by doing what is right? The answer to that is no. Salvation is a gift for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When we understand that salvation is a free gift, then the things that we do, we're not going to be we're not going to be rewarded with eternal life for doing the things we're supposed to do. And the law wasn't meant to show us uh, how to be saved. It was meant to show us that we need to be saved. 
you know, the, the law is good is if it's used lawfully. The law is meant for sinners. It's to show sinners that they need a Savior. The law is our schoolmaster to lead us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Not that we might be justified by keeping the law. That's what it says. If you want to read Galatians 3.24, it's a good one to memorize. The law is the schoolmaster to lead us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. If, if it were that we were supposed to keep the law, then it would be that we would be justified by keeping the law. Okay, And it doesn't say that, that we might be justified by faith, that we put our faith in Jesus Christ. Now, of course, there are rewards for doing what the Lord asks us to do, and we should do those things. But even in that, uh, I don't think there's reward then, you know, just for doing what we're supposed to do within the law. There's a reward for uh, the calling that he's given us and doing the things that he's called us to do. Uh, so we'll end there for today. I hope I've given you some things to think about. And uh, may the Lord bless you with the reading of his word today.